I am proud to introduce our next guest, who has done amazing work in various roles on the House Committee on Veterans Affairs, a proud Boy State alum who hails from California. Before running for office in 1992, he was a British literature teacher for 23 years. As former chairman of the House Veterans Affairs Committee, he introduced the PACT Act, which became law in September, opening access to VA health care for 3.5 million veterans. He also has fought hard for honorably discharged veterans who were later deported, stating that if anyone deserves a second chance in our country, it's our veterans. American Legion family, please give a warm welcome to the Honorable Representative Mark Ticano. Well, good morning. Good morning, Legionnaires. Uh, I'm very glad to be joining you all in person this morning and to say uh, that the last Congress was a productive session for veterans would be an understatement. And I think if you look at the work that uh, uh, we did, if you, look at, if you look at it closely, I think you'll believe me when I say that your voices were heard and your priorities were reflected in my own priorities for the Veterans Affairs Committee. Let me just give you a, a rundown. Uh, as evidence. Last Congress, we passed 81 bills in the House, including bipartisan bills to reduce veteran suicide, ensure every day in uniform counts toward GI Bill benefits, ease the transition from active duty to civilian life, strengthen VA care, and protect women veterans' equitable access to their earned care and benefits. We were also able to wrap up the 117th Congress with packages of veterans legislation, including the Strong Veterans Act and the Cleland Dole Memorial Veterans Benefits and Health Care Improvement Act. Now, these are all important bills, but without a doubt, the most significant bill this committee worked on was the Honoring Our Pact Act, my bill to comprehensively address the effects of toxic exposures, including exposures to burn pits, radiation, and Agent Orange. Now getting my Honoring Our Pact Act passed out of the House, the Senate, and signed into law would not have been possible if it were not for the tireless advocacy and support from everyone in this room today. So thank you very much for your advocacy. Now, because of your support throughout the year, millions of veterans and their loved ones can rest a little easier knowing that the United States is finally recognizing their health conditions as a cost of war, and that their families can spend more precious time with each other instead of fighting VA for their loved one's care. Blue Water Navy veterans waited more than 40 years for benefits related to Agent Orange exposure because of Congress's piecemeal solutions. We were not going to let this happen again. And thanks to our efforts last Congress, we kept our promise. But now the hard work begins, and I look forward to continuing to work to make sure this transformational law is implemented effectively. Getting the Honor in Our Pact Act signed into law was one of the huge bipartisan wins we accomplished last Congress. And a huge part of this victory was because of, as I said before, your support and advocacy. However, I'm worried about the fate of these accomplishments. The new majority announced its intention to implement budget cuts across federal agencies and return us to fiscal year 2022 spending levels. This means the bills we passed and the programs we authorized are in jeopardy. For VA, Returning to fiscal year 2022 means, get this, a 24% cut, or $31 billion. That would effectively wash away the huge successes of the past four years. This means that the bills uh, that the House Democrats passed and got signed into law are at stake, including programs that, reduce, that would reduce veteran suicide, enhance services to women veterans, support survivors of MST, and help homeless veterans. 
I don't want to see veterans forced to participate in the equivalent of the Hunger Games with their own programs. And we don't want to pit veteran funding, uh, uh, funding for veterans programs against other programs that all Americans benefit from. Now, we've heard that the defense budget may be off the table for these cuts, but it is even more troubling because it makes no sense that we keep funding the huge Department of Defense budget, but once that you take off the uniform, your ability to access VA is then in question. It then becomes a question of which veterans programs get cut in favor of other programs. I'm going to tell you, I will not stand by and see veterans forced to fight other veterans for the care and benefits that they have rightfully earned. Now, just reflect on this. 3.5 million veterans under the PACT Act were made newly eligible uh, for VA health care. We had intended to phase this in over time uh, as a way to uh, maybe soften the impact, but President Biden, in my view, made the correct decision when he signed the bill and said that under his administration, he was going to uh, uh, address all 3.5 million veterans immediately, that they should have access to that eligibility. And that's exactly what he ordered uh, his uh, Veterans Administration to do. We need to make sure that the wins we solidified for today's veterans are still available for veterans of tomorrow. I'm not being hyperbolic or alarmist here. I really don't know how VA could absorb the level of cuts I described to you and still deliver on care and services to veterans. I don't know how we could stand by and watch these cuts get implemented and then really, in reality, renege on the promise that we made to our veterans. I'm committed to not allowing this to happen. And as you meet with your, veteran, as your, with your representatives this week, I ask you to raise these concerns with them. I hope you'll get more information about how these budget proposals will impact the care and benefits that you have earned. When we got the Honorary Pact Act signed into law, we sent a message to millions of veterans that the United States of America will uphold her promise to pay for the cost of war. This is a promise that I refuse to renege on, and it is a promise that I will hold my counterparts across the aisle accountable to. We still have a lot of work to do on behalf of our veterans, but I know that with your support here today and along with the support of the Biden-Harris administration, we will be able to achieve these goals and fulfill the sacred promise, the sacred promises that we made to our nation's veterans. So thank you all for having me here this morning. Enjoy your time in our nation's capital, and I hope to see you all on the Hill uh, tomorrow. God bless you. And God bless these United States of America. Thank you.